Hi guys, it's me Sam from the Unity of Life and today we're going to try be trying something a little bit different. So as you can see we're going to go through a PowerPoint presentation. Um, and we're going to be looking at managing um, of young animals because we've already looked at how to manage adults um, when you're breeding them. So now we're going to look at any problems that might occur um, after the babies have been born, the puppies in particular for this um, particular slideshow. And we're going to look at how you go about looking after them. So I'm just going to go on to this next slide. So. Let's just do an introduction. So, this is a special care routine, which is going to be looking at the taking care of uh, an orphan puppy. This routine starts from when it is born and finishes when the puppy has been weaned. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I look yellow. Um, at the moment, I'm I'm trying to sort the lighting out, and it it's not going very well. So I apologise for for that. Um, special care situations occur when the mother neglects the puppy or puppies, or the mother dies, which can happen. It's quite sad. Um, or she, you know, she's got a medical pro problem and she's unable to provide for. Um, but the puppies are able to produce any milk. Um, so the breed that um, I'm going to talk to you through about is going to be a crossbreed. However, this occurs to every single breed of animals. Well, it's not just uh, crossbreeds; it's any breed of animal. Um, and the story that I'm going to introduce you to and talking to you about is my late dog Rosie who we believe was a whippet cross for Ryan Lurcher, but we don't actually know. So feeding, so feeding a newborn puppy is very important as the important as the milk from its mother will help it to give all the nutrients that it will need to help it to grow strong and healthy, which is what we want for all our little puppies and kittens. This is the same thing at the moment for puppies and kittens. So we're going to talk about colostrum now. So this colostrum is the mother's first milk and it tends to be very yellow in colour. Um, and it's very important that the newborn puppies um, consume the colostrum within the first 24 hours of its birth. And this is the same case for any animal, not just dogs. However, the sooner they have it, the better. So, colostrum, so you want them to try and have it as soon as they're born, basically. So colostrum contains antibodies from its mother that will help the puppies to keep healthy and fight off any disease they may get. It is important that they get vaccinated by a vet at six weeks old. So that's only their first lot of injections. They should be getting their second lot of injections around about eight weeks old. And if your dog has had a litter in the past and you have you might have frozen some colostrum um, which is also is a good idea just in case when you breathe them again something does go wrong with colostrum and um, you've got some on standby and you can give this to the puppies or maybe somebody that you know has got some spare um, and you should feed your puppies every two hours in the first week as they get older the intervals in which they are fed will get longer so they won't need to be fed every two hours um, once they get a little bit older some milk in the case of an orphan you will need to feed your puppy or puppies um commercial canine milk replacer so like humans be using milk um i'm forgetting to do this there we go um we'll use things like formula milk so this should always be specifically for puppies um, and not for any other species. And don't forget to read the instructions, that's only common sense. Um, and the milk from any other animal can cause the puppies to have diarrhea, so don't be giving them milk from a fridge. 
Oh, there's my little puppy. So this is Robazine. Um, back in 2005, so she was about 10 to 12 weeks old here. Um, and we can't resist getting her that toy and she does look like she's rather drunk with her, her dog beer there. So let, let, let me tell you a little bit about Rosie. So Rosie's mother escaped from her home uh, and this basically resulted in an unwanted pregnancy. So this is why it's also it's always a very good idea to make sure that your house is secure and you are able to look after your animals correctly and they're not going to run away. So not long after she had her pups, I'm not sure how many she had in the litter, um, she has escaped again and unfortunately she was hit and killed by a car. Uh, I'm not quite sure how old the puppies were at this point either. Um, but they were taken to a rescue charity known as Animal Concern. Um, at that time was in Workington but they've now moved to Egremont I think. Um, and they managed to get them into foster care which were they where they were hand-reared. So Rosie and her siblings, that is, they were hand-reared there. So let's talk about rearing and development. It's very important that the puppy is monitored. Um, so the things that you need to check is that it is eaten normally. And it's eaten enough that it's going to survive. Two very indicators, good indicators, that there may be um, health problems are urine and poo. Oh my. Newborn puppies need to pee and poo, like every other living animal, after or before every meal. Uh, and this is every two hours. Um, and the wee should be a light in colour. And if the wee is a dark colour, uh, then the puppies are not getting enough milk, which can be problematic. The poo should be semi-solid and dark, um, brown in colour, and if it's green, that could be a sign of an infection, so you might want to take it to the vet to get that checked out. So, the very first week your puppies are born, are alive. At birth, the puppy's nervous system is still developing, strangely. However, they do have four or reflexes that are important for their survival. These are known as the primary reflex, uh, reflexes, which is the burrowing reflex. So the burrowing is where the puppy looks for warmth. In a normal case, this would be from mum. However, in this case, mum is not around. So keeping a newborn puppy is down, well, warm to you, is down to you to help them regulate that body heat. Um, because they can't regulate their own body heat at this point. So they need to be kept near a temperature of around 30 degrees. You can do this by having a box full of clean blankets and having it near a fire or with a heat mat under the, the blankets. That's part of the box. Part of the box needs to be away from the fire you, or, a heat, or the heat mat because you don't want them to get too hot. Uh, and puppies, don't forget, are born blind and deaf, so they are absolutely completely dependent on their mother. They do, however, respond to touch, so it's a good idea to have a stuffed toy in the nesting box with the puppy for it to cuddle up with as if it was mum. Um, if you're hand rearing more than one puppy, so like a litter, they may cuddle up with each other. They do have a suckling reflex. So the suckling reflex helps the puppy to suckle, which it needs to be able to do in order to receive the milk. You should always make sure that the puppy is actually taking in the milk every time you feed it, because it needs to live. And it's got this, um, I might not be pronouncing this properly, but when do I ever pronounce anything properly? They Perineal reflex, which helps the puppies to urinate and defecate. So this reflex is stimulated by the mother licking the genitals of the puppy. However, mum, mum is, if mum's not around, it's your job to do this. And I don't mean you're licking the genitals of the puppy. Um, what you're going to do is to make sure it goes to the puppy. You to go to the toilet. You're going to get a damp 
piece of cotton wool and you're going to wipe the genital area um, to stimulate the, the licking. And if the puppy does not pass any worse than you need to see your vet straight away. Carrying reflex. So the last reflex is the carrying reflex. This makes the puppy go stiff when it is picked up by the neck. Um, and that's to stop it from hurting itself or being getting hurt. From day two, you should weigh your puppy every day to make sure it is gaining the right amount of weight every day. Um, a whip it or lurch above should be 200 to 300 grams. Oh, that's so small. As they are classed as a medium sized breed. Um, every day, there should be a steady increase of weight put on. Their body weight should have doubled by day seven. So, when the puppy is about two weeks old, their eyes are going to open. Although the vision is still developing and their hearing will start to improve too. The nervous system of the puppy is still developing, however, at week three, the hind legs being to work or begin to work and they can now hold their own body weight and begin to sit the primary reflexes start to disappear uh, now that the puppy can regulate its own body temperature and is less dependent on the sense of touch the disappearance of the primary reflexes is a sign of good neurological maturity. The third week is where the puppy will start to gain, get its milk teeth. So like us, dogs go through two sets of teeth. Um, elephants are slightly different, they have six. Um, and the puppy may suffer pain during teething, just like a normal human baby would. Um, so a teething or cold ring may help, or even teeth and gel. Everything you would do for your teeth and child. At three months of age, the milk teeth will start to drop out and you will rarely see these teeth when they drop out of the gums because puppies tend to swallow them. At six to seven months of age, the puppy will have its adult teeth. So when they're about three to five weeks old, this is when the canines start to appear. When they're four to six weeks old, this is when the incisors start to appear. Five to six, the third and fourth premolars appear. And four months old, the first premolars appear. Um, and this is a permanent tooth. So week four, so weaning. And this is where weaning begins. Your puppy will still need milk at this stage, but will need less as its nutritional requirements change. The pup's psychological, uh, sorry, physiological will also change. The puppy requires extra energy, as this is the stage where their mother would usually produce less milk. The puppy's ability to digest the lactose which is found in milk rapidly decreases and there are hundreds of different foods that are made for puppies when they start to be weaned so just do research on um, what's the best one to feed your puppies one so one website suggests either a starter kibble or a starter mousse both contain all nutrients that the puppy is going to need for the rest of its development this is also the stage where the puppies will start to move around and they're going to climb out of the box and they're going to start giving you a run for your money. Week five. So now the puppy can hear and it can see you. And it's going to start to socialise. That's when, you know, you're going to start socialising with the puppy. The puppy needs lots of attention from you. Um, if you are rearing a litter, then the puppies will start to learn from each other. If this is a single puppy, so this is, I'm saying you can't see my face. Ah, there we go. You can see the, see the rest of the screen now. Um, so the puppy's going to start learning from each other. If this is a single puppy, you should introduce it to other, introduce it to other puppies. Uh, 
but only if the other puppies have been vaccinated. It is also important to introduce the puppies to other people as well as other puppies of a similar age. Socialising is very important for the calm, confident and non-aggressive dogs. Puppies will now explore the outside world. You can take them on brief five minute walks around your neighbourhood. Um, but make sure they don't come into contact with any of the dogs because they've not had the injections yet. And this allows the puppies to get you noobs to sounds and smells. And it's important to keep your puppies... Yeah, like I said, I, I, I just stated that bit. Anyway, let's move on to week six and week seven. At this stage, puppies will become more reserved and unsure of new things. This is also the time in which the antibodies that the puppies receive from the colostrum starts to weaken. So this is when they need a boost. To do this, you will need to take your puppies to the vets for their first vaccinations. They will need to be boosted annually. On week eight, this is when you'll be able to rehome the puppies and you can take your cute little bundle of joy home. So the puppy should be fully weaned and should be ready to be rehomed during the process of rearing the puppy. You should be doing regular health checks on the puppy. So this is so uh, this whole socialisation and um, the the development is why they are not ready to go um, to any home before they are eight weeks of age. Oh God! Um, early training and homing. Um, there's a very young me with a very young Rosie. Um, I'm not sure if she was one at this point or if she wasn't quite one. She might have been a few months old. Um, and Clem, that was 2006, so if that was the case, she was one. Um, However, anyway. So, homing a new, a new puppy can be very exciting. So, I remember when I was six. Was I six? I can't have been six in 2006. I was born in 98, not 2000. So I was like eight. So I was actually seven when we got her. I don't know why I said, why that's a six on there. Anyway, um, so when I was like, yeah, we'll go from when I was seven when we got Rosie. Because we got a frozen in 2005, uh, it was June so, uh, and I had just finished school, it was, the school day had ended um, and my mum told me that we were going out to <clears throat> meet my dad's after he finished work and I didn't think anything about it um, until we pulled up outside of the house I, I should have known something was going on at this point in time because we never went to meet him after work and so this this is a house I didn't recognize but we got out of the car anyway um, and a woman answered the door who I also did not recognize on the floor was this little black so Rosie was spoken for, however they couldn't get hold of her owner and so she was the last puppy to go so that's why there was none of her siblings around and she just came running up to me and um, I, that's when I realised it was a little puppy um, and as soon as I realised that I was straight down onto the floor playing with her um, it was like we chose each other the woman was happy to know that we seemed to get on and allowed us to take her home. Rosie stayed by my side until the day she sadly passed. Ten years later. So, um, Rosie's story, obviously, like I said, that happened way back in 2005. Um, and today a lot of people, whether it's a breeder or an animal charity, they like to uh, go and see the puppy's potential new home, which they didn't back when we got Rosie, um, and to make sure that the new owner has everything that they, they're going to need. Um, however, they don't seem to support them really much afterwards, which is what um, the Unity of Life, if they ever get it up as a business, is going to try and achieve. It's going to try and help support you once you've got your puppy. Um, so when you have a new puppy at home, you should start training it as soon as possible. However, you, you want to give it um, a couple of days to settle into its new environment before you, you, you start any training. 
So training helps to strengthen the bond between you and your new puppy. So start off simply with house training because you don't really want it pooping and peeing in your house. Um, your puppy, the last thing you want is your, yeah, like I said, you don't want it to go into the house. It can take between four to six months for your puppy to be fully house trained. Bear in mind. Um, and one thing you need to know is that smaller breeds have smaller bladders, so they will need to go to the toilet more often. Makes an awful lot of sense. Eventually, you'll pick up on the signs that your dog needs to go to the toilet, as every dog has um, different ways of going to the toilet. And when you notice these, you take your puppy outside as quickly as possible. With the puppy outside until it has done what it needs to. When the puppy is finished, tell your puppy in a happy voice that it's done a good job. It's a good little girl. It's a good little boy. And reward it for going to the toilet. The puppy will learn that it is where you want the puppy to go when it needs to go to the toilet. You should also, also praise your puppy for going to the toilet when out on walks as well. And that will reinforce that behaviour. And also remember to let your puppy go outside first thing in the morning and last thing at night. You may even get a dog flap to teach your puppy to go through it. However, they're not really um, secure these days, so a lot of people don't have dog flaps. Um, and you may also want to consider basic obedience, these things like sit, stay on paw. Um, but you can get a lot of help from a trainer um, if you are struggling whatsoever. And that's what we're going to do. Or try to do with, uh, with the unity of life this business ever goes anywhere. So identifying any potential problems that might occur in the offspring. Um, so we need to have a, be able to understand these things. So a physical abnormality that is present at birth is anal opening, so it could be missing. So the anal membrane is not present in the fetus. The puppy will die without emergency surgery because it's got nothing to help it go to the toilet. Um, and the vet will have to make an anal opening. Etopic uterus, urethra, the more, this is more common in females instead of the urethra emptying into the bladder, they will empty into the vaginal canal or the uterus making the puppy incontinent. Surgery is required to reopen the, the urethra into the bladder, so reposition. Um, liver shunts is something that Papillaranians have and suffer with if we're not careful. While a puppy is still um, a fetus growing in the mother's uterus, it is the mother's liver that performs all the functions and this happens via the shunt. So this is a blood vessel that connects the fetus and the mother. So the shunt normally closes when the mother goes into labour, allowing the pup own liver to take over this work. However, with this health problem, this does not happen. It's referred to as an open shunt, or there is a genetic abnormality that causes the puppy's blood vessels to grow outside the liver. Um, so we've also got pituitary dwarfism. So this is where there is not enough production of the growth hormone in the pituitary gland and shunts the growth of the puppy. It can also be in um, be hereditary. So let's have a look at some of these head hereditary um, deformities and diseases. Um, and this is obviously passed on through the genes from their parents. So one thing um, the disorder that is known as swimmers. Swimmers is thought to be either genetics neither genetics or the environment but a mix of both. Swimmers cause a flattening of the thorax and ad abdomen and is more commonly seen in dwarf animals because they're closer to the ground. The thorax is meant to develop into a progressively deeper tube from the posterior and the neck area to the diaphragm says so swimmers cause the thorax to become a flattened cylinder in shape this over time makes the puppy more pancaked shape stopping the ability to walk 
heart disease can be inherited in many different breeds. So Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and Dash Hounds can get um, Macrimosis valve disease. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. Um, Doberman Pinchers, Great Danes and Boxers have a genetic pre -pro pre for cardiopathy. Again, I'm probably not saying these things right, these technical modern terms. Eh? Problems associated with orphans, because this is what we are talking about. So puppies learn a lot from their mothers as well as relying on them for survival. So if the mother is not around, it can have some devastating effects on the puppy. If the puppy is very young when its mother dies and does not find another carer, caregiver then the puppy will die if the puppy is old enough to survive without its mother then it may become disturbed fearful depressed or even hyperactive this is more likely if it is a single puppy the problems are not as bad if there is a little orphaned puppies as they will have each other which is important for socialization when they are older however they are still problems that can occur without a mother Nursing is not just a way to obtain food, but a source of comfort, so is grooming. So when the puppies are stressed, they will try to nurse each other. If they are not groomed by their mother, then they will de develop slowly. Hand rearing and fostering. Hand rearing or fostering puppies is not an easy task as much as yeah much could go wrong it is also hard to work as you need to provide around the clock care and make sure that the puppies are still think they are puppies and not humans which is much easier to do with puppies and birds puppies need other dogs around them to help guide and teach them the correct behaviors they will need when they are adults you know social equipment for dogs it's a good idea to make sure that they are an that you have an adult dog that is good with puppies when you are considering fostering or hand rearing it's also better to have more than one puppy to rear or foster at any one time as this will they will help each other with their development so back to rosie the lady who took on rosie and her siblings also had two dogs of her own which is i remember correctly were labradors um and i believe they would have helped with the care of the puppies um as they may have had previous litters. So we've also got things like feeding puppy syndrome um, and it's hard to describe um, other than the fact that the, that the puppy just died and we don't know why. Um, yeah, so the risk of feeding puppies is higher if the mother had problems during the pregnancy, had a difficult delivery. There were problems in which the puppy is not suckling after birth. If the puppies were exposed to poor hygiene environments before the immune system has a chance to fully develop, the run of the litter is most at risk. Causes of feeding puppy syndrome may include birth defects and developmental problems, the transmissions of diseases through nursing, um, a difficult delivery, the mother being fed a poor diet, poor hygiene, a hygienic environment, uh, the mother has no trust in her litter because some don't have a maternal instinct. The puppy. Sorry, I've lost what I was. Um, Bear with me. Yeah, they're probably struggling or not wanting to be nursed. So another issue can be canine herpes. Uh, which is a viral infection that infects the reproductive system and does not show any signs. It is transmitted through sneezing, coughing, nosing, sniffing, licking and sexual activities. A puppy will get the virus from an infected mother as the puppy will pick up the virus from the birth canal or from 
nasal and oral secretions from the mother shortly after birth. Older puppies who may have the virus may have system and abnormalities including blindness and seizures. Newborn puppies may die. Other symptoms include weaknesses um, and being tired all the time, persistence crying, lack of suckling reflex or appetite, a painful abdomen, bruising or bloating, soft yellow green feces, chilled cold puppies, um, respiratory difficulties, nasal discharge, um, they could have internal bleedings um, or they could have nosebleeds and small bruises. Toxic milk syndrome is caused by the infection or bacterial poison of the mother's milk. It can be caused by mastitis. You should always check the mammary gland of the mother as the infection could have entered the milk from the mother's blood. Umbilical infection. Um, an umbilical infection is where the navel, on which, is, which will close up on the puppy, when the umbilical cord drops off, becomes red and inflamed. The infected navel may um, abscess or sleep out pus. The umbilical infection is caused when the umbilical cord is cut too close to the abdominal wall at birth. There is no stump left for a clean separation and it will not close properly. Another cause of umbilical infection is the use of dirty scissors to cut the cord. If the infection is not treated, then more severe problems can occur. So this puppy that you can see on the screen that is then grew, grew into a, the dog that you can see on the right has a cleft palate. So that's what a cleft palate can look like, though that's um, quite an extreme case. So cleft palate is a Skeletal disorder. This occurs when the palate is formed and the bones of the roof of the mouth do not grow normally. This causes an opening in the mouth that com communicates with the nasal cavity. The opening can cause problems for a newborn puppy when nursing as the milk will either come out of its nose or the puppy will inhale the milk into its lungs causing hypothermia. Stillbirths. Stillbirth is when a puppy is born dead. There are many reasons why this may happen. The puppy could have died in the womb, so it would not, will not be as developed as its siblings, or it could die as a result of a hard problematic labour. Some causes include the puppy may become stuck in the birth canal, breach delivery, or even two puppies in the canal birth. Birth canal, sorry. Problems during delivery include puppies being too big. Some hereditary conditions in some breeds can be a cause of stillbirths, which may be a consequence of inbreeding, um, an unhealthy or otherwise unstable dam, stress during pregnancy. Other causes include sexually transmitted infections. If you do decide to breed your dog, you will need her or him to have a health check, as do the other parents. Um, uh, most common STI is something called brachiosis, and brachiosis is a highly contagious zoonotic bacterial disease. Bacteria called Barcelona is uh, the cause, um, and obviously, and and this Barcelona has no spore forming rods. There are a number of Barcelona species which infect various species of wildlife. Signs include difficulty walking, back pain, vaginal discharge, swollen testicles. This can lead to sick and weak newborn puppies um, and infertility in adults. There may be inflama inflammation of the skin around the scrotum. Antibiotics can be used to treat the disease, but they're, uh, they're not always effective. Da da da! Conclusion! And this is also Rosie posing um, in that picture there. So let's just finish up with what happens to Rosie in the end and finish off her little story. So there are a lot of things that could go wrong when hand rearing a new puppy. It's also not an easy task as there is so much a puppy needs 
for um, the correct development. Hand rearing more than one puppy is easier than rearing one puppy on its own as the puppies will help each other to develop normally. The hard work and dedication of Rose's foster carers provided me with a sister as I'm an only child and a friend for many, many years um, until sadly on the 23rd of June 2015 um, she, we made the hard decision to have to put her down uh, because she had a tumour on her lungs and was struggling to breathe. So, um, that is all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this um, quick little video. If you have, then you can subscribe by clicking on my face which will appear on the screen um, and if you want to look at any of these other breeding videos there will be also be a link to the different playlists that you can check out so don't forget to like comment and subscribe turn on that notification bell and you'll be notified every time a video comes up which is every saturday and wednesday and i will see you in the next one bye for now